Alright, so about two months ago, I posted a video where I attempted to beat Cuphead's entire game without moving. This was by far one of the hardest challenges I've ever attempted in my entire life. Please, man, please, please, please. Oh my god! And no joke, it took me over 18 hours to complete. So, when I say I didn't want to do this challenge again... Excuse me? I'm not lying. So, to make sure that didn't happen, I added the unreachable goal of 10,000 likes, and if we reach 10,000 likes on that video, I would do the DLC. And currently, the video is sitting at 20,000 likes. So... That's right, ladies and gentlemen. In today's video, we are going to be attempting to beat Cuphead's DLC without moving a single time. So what exactly does no moving mean? No moving basically means that I'm not allowed to do any inputs on my controller that would move my character in any significant way. Meaning our first rule for ground levels is that I'm not allowed to walk slash run. This is pretty obvious because I'm not supposed to be moving. The second rule is going to be no dashing. This is also pretty obvious because it moves my character very, very far, which means it's not allowed. The third rule is going to be no invincibility roll. If I'm using this chalice, I can't use her invincibility roll because that also moves me. The fourth and final rule for this challenge is that we are not allowed to go into simple difficulty ever throughout this entire challenge. But there's technically one movement that we are allowed to do, and that's jumping. Because when I jump, I return to the exact same place as I started with, so I never end up actually moving. And also, the challenge would literally be completely impossible without jumping. For plane levels, since I allowed jumping during regular levels, I allowed only vertical movements during plane levels. There is a way to do plane levels without moving ever, but this relies on a very, very broken glitch, which basically just makes player 2 completely invincible. And just as general rules, moving throughout the map doesn't count, and also Jimmy wishes are completely allowed. And since there's such a small amount of bosses in the actual DLC, once we beat them, I'm gonna add them into a tier list. One more quick thing before this video begins, I'm gonna have to make another deal with you. Recently, I've been attempting to beat the entirety of Cuphead blindfolded. That's right, no seeing at all. So if you really want to see me beat Cuphead blindfolded, we're going to have to get to another 10,000 likes. You all did it the first time, but I don't think you're going to do it again. So if you really want to see it, 10,000 likes. All right, with all that said, I'm going to stop talking. Let's get right into the challenge. And we're going to start off with our first boss of the challenge, the Moonshine Mob. Now, just a bit of background for this boss. I was doing some practice before stream to see how hard these bosses would actually be, and I may or may not have beaten this boss on my second attempt. So that might tell you where it's going in the tier list. Anyways, for this boss fight, I'm going to bring along my secret weapon, the Lobber. Now, in a challenge like this, you might be wondering why I'm using the Lobber shot. Let me explain. Basically, when you shoot the lobber, it has a slight arc upwards. And after it arcs, it's going to fall back down and hit the ground. But when it hits the ground, it actually bounces. Although the lobber shot will pop after three bounces on the ground. The best thing about this is that the lobber shot actually goes through platforms. Do you see what's going on now? What I'm going to do is stand on the top floor and shoot the lobber directly upwards. And because of my absolutely insane height from being on the top floor, plus the fact that the lobber actually goes through the platforms, we are going to make what I like to call the lobber wall. With the insane power of the lobber wall, we can absolutely shred through phase one. Once we move on to phase two, we're going to change our strategy a bit and we're going to start using the crack shot. I want to use the crack shot in this phase just because it works really well to get rid of the minions. Sometimes we can get really lucky with dodging the lasers and all we have to do is just go down two platforms, but other than that, we're just going to try and damage tank to get through this phase. There's nothing else to it, we're just going to use our crack shot and damage tank till the phase is over. And now we're on to the final phase. I'm just not even going to say anything about this, just look at it. Yeah, when I say the lobber's the best for this fight, I'm not joking. To kill the snail, we're just gonna jump up and down to dodge his attacks, and we're done. Oh. Easy sh bro, call me easy cheesy, b Call me easy cheesy! Bro, 
That was pre-stream. That was pre-stream warm up right now. So yeah, second attempt. This boss is absolute baby mode. It's going bottom tier. All right, our next boss is gonna be the angel and the devil. I honestly don't even know why I'm talking about this boss. I beat it first try with the wishes and then thought it was gonna be harder without. And then I beat it first try without the wishes. Literally my entire strategy here was go on the cloud, use Miss Chalice and use the crack shot. And that's absolutely it. I made sure to look the other direction when they spawn the firewalls. And then when they spawn the fireballs, all I would do is just jump. So yeah, we beat him literally first try. They are going in the tier above Moonshine Mob. But that's only because they're technically a mini boss and it's kind of embarrassing that they're as easy as a regular boss. Okay, now that I'm done just making fun of those two bosses, we're on to some actual hard ones, beginning with some furries. Wait, hold on. Oh, it's, it's, a, it's a hot female dog. Nothing wrong with being a, a female dog. Being kind of hot. Like I said, this is where the challenge starts to become absolutely insane. And it's not for the reasons you think. It's because my pilot doesn't know how to fly his plane. Oh, he left without me! <laughs> Are you f kidding me, bro? I can't do it. Where are you going, bro? Ow! Ah, why? Why? Yeah. Anyways. I tried so many different strategies to actually beat this boss, from using the Divine Relic, to using the Twin Hearts Charm, to even trying to do the Secret Phase. But after hours of attempt, we finally found the strategy, and that's of course, Miss Chalice. To start off the boss fight, I want him coming down from the left side of the screen. Now, I know that sounds stupid, because that's literally just an automatic hit. But if I did take a hit, it would push me slightly to the right, meaning I could dodge any attack that he shoots now. Another thing we have to pay attention to is which side of the plane we're on. Depending on which side, that's going to be the way that we end up moving. And of course, we want to be in the middle of the screen because that makes every attack the easiest to dodge. So with the knockback from the first hit plus two EX moves, we're actually going to be far enough to the right of the plane where it actually starts to move us towards the middle of the screen. And that's the first phase down. Hopefully by the second phase, we didn't take any other hits apart from the first one that we took, and we should be on three HP. If we shoot directly upwards at the beginning of the phase, we do enough damage with the uncracked crack shot that the first dog dies instantly. The second phase shows the real reason why I chose Miss Chalice. Her double jump makes the letters so much easier to dodge, and it just turns the second phase into a joke. We're just gonna use the crack shot and focus on dodging, and the phase is over pretty fast. And now we're on to the hardest phase we've versed in the DLC so far. The laser attacks that she does are extremely RNG based, so we basically just have to hope that we get good patterns, and other than that, they're pretty easy to dodge. But that's not the only attack she has. She also has the food bowl attack. This attack is absolutely stupid. I'm gonna try my best to be in the middle of the screen, but sometimes we just get given a pattern that is completely impossible to dodge. And hopefully up until this point, we haven't taken a hit other than the first one we took at the beginning of the boss fight. So we're gonna try our best to damage tank through this phase. And literally just with a ton of RNG luck, we finished the boss fight. We did it, boys! Let's go, baby! An hour and four minutes, chat. Right when Minionette got here. That was for you, baby. Let's go! So yeah, definitely the hardest DLC boss we've faced so far, but they are not even close to some of the upcoming ones. So, Howling Aces gets a middle tier. Our next boss up is gonna be cold grandpa this boss fight was looking like it was going to be another really really easy boss fight until this happened chief <laughs> um all right chief <laughs> i need to be over here <laughs> god damn it we're just not gonna talk about that the first phase of this boss fight's really, really simple. I can't really avoid many of the attacks. I'll try my best to dodge with Miss Chalice's double jump, but other than that, there's no strategy to it. 
It's just hoping that I don't take any damage. Although during the first phase, whenever we get EX moves, we're gonna make sure to push ourselves towards the middle of the screen. And hopefully with enough damage tanking and EX moves, we're close enough to the middle of the screen that during his second phase transition, he doesn't actually hit us. Now that we're in the second phase, there's only a few attacks that he can actually do. The first attack is the spike attack, which we can't do anything about it. We literally just have to hope that we're in between the spikes, and if we're not, we're gonna take damage. The next attack is where he rolls or jumps to the other side of the screen. This attack gets telegraphed really, really well, so it's really easy to dodge. All we have to do is just use Miss Chalice's double jump or not jump. The third and final attack that he can do is the ice cube attack, and this is by far the hardest attack to actually dodge. To dodge this attack, you need to perfectly time Miss Chalice's double jump so that once it explodes, you're already in the air so you can fall right between the mini ice cubes. And with enough attempts, we can make it past the second phase onto the final phase. Sometimes. Okay, well, uh, we made it to the final phase. <laughs> no! <laughs> no! Once we make it to the final phase, it's literally just RNG. We're gonna ride the platforms in a circle and just hope that we dodge majority of the attacks. I'd explain my strategy for these final phase attacks, but I literally don't have one. After enough attempts, we finally got lucky enough to make it to the final phase with 2 HP plus Miss Chalice's Super Art 2, which gives us an extra hit point. And after a lot of luck, we beat him. Mortimer is a bozo, ladies and gentlemen. He is right. Mortimer is a bozo, man! He's a bozo! Yes, sir! Let's go, baby! Alright, with that mild reaction and with Grandpa sufficiently knocked out, it's time to add Mortimer Freeze to the tier list, and he's gonna go in the middle tier. He's definitely a really, really hard boss, but he is nowhere near the next boss. So, uh, now that it's like halfway through the video, it's probably a good time to add. If you want to see the proof for literally any boss fight in this entire challenge, pretty much every boss fight apart from a few bosses was done on live stream, and you can go to my VODs channel, Chicken Ninja 42 VODs, to watch those. Anyways, back to the challenge, Glumstone the Giant. This is where the challenge literally becomes physically pain-inducing. Okay, can you just like chill out, please? What is happening? Stop reaching in your ass, man. Oh, oh, no, wait, kill him, kill him, kill him. No tickling. Ah, can you just chill the f out, damn? Stop it with the f cat in your ass, bro. Stop it, please. Seriously, man! I fucking hate you! I hate you so much, dude! I hate this fucking esophagus motherfucker, dude! Oh my god, man! So yeah, needless to say, this boss is absolutely horrible. During the first phase, there's a lot of stuff that we have to look out for. The first attack that he can do is the attack where he opens his mouth and shoots like some weird gas at you. I, I don't really know. This attack is pretty simple to dodge. I just have to jump or duck depending on where the gas actually is. The second attack he can do is the geese attack where he sends a bunch of geese above me. This attack is also really easy to dodge as long as he doesn't move my platform up and into it. But other than that, we just have to stand there. I am aware that you can just go down below the platform, but most of the time there is a gnome there, so I'm just going to take damage anyways. The third and final attack you can do in this phase is the anus cat. Yes, I am aware it's a bear thing. Whatever, shut up. This attack is pretty much impossible to dodge unless I send him into his second phase before he can actually finish the attack. But other than that, we just restart the battle. So yeah, that's it for his attacks, but there's also gnomes that can spawn on the ground which shoot stuff at you. And there's also the gnomes that spawn on the platforms, which can hit you with hammers. But that's also not it, because the platforms that I'm standing on can also disappear. During the first phase of his boss fight, he'll pull two random platforms, and if that happens to be the one that I'm standing on, we have to restart. And with all that said, that is just the first phase of this three-phased boss fight. 
Once we make it to the second phase, I just, I have no words. I brought along the converge shot, which helped a bit. But throughout the second phase, there's random gnomes that appear from the ground, which also like to appear underneath me. And while I'm trying to shoot those gnomes, there's also two puppets playing volleyball between me. This was the phase that would make or break my run. I could make it to the second phase pretty much without taking a hit, but I could lose almost all my health on this one phase. And with all of that done, we still have an extremely difficult final phase to get through. During the final phase, I can't parry to regain any of my platforms, meaning once he takes out the platform underneath us, we're done. So not only does that implement another factor of RNG, but we also have to make it to this phase without losing more than half of our health, and we have to have our super with us. And all of that is required to have the perfect boss fight to defeat Glumstone the Giant. <laughs> Let's go, baby. <laughs> Let's go, baby. That's a W in the chat. That's a W in the chat. Let's go, baby. And finally, that boss is defeated. We have a new king of the DLC island. Glumstone the Giant was definitely the hardest boss we've versed so far. The keyword being so far. That's right, our second to last boss is gonna be Esther Winchester. This boss is so insanely difficult that I originally didn't even think it was gonna be possible. And also, I had to do it off stream because I was getting so mad. F Hell, I hate this f cow, dude. I'm about to f go home and eat f three burgers. I can't do anything other than f suck my own c over there. Why is there f wiener up there, bro? Why, why don't you want to f give me tiny suck? But of course, the f bird with the dynamite had to f me over in the anus. Ah! Don't be a silly sausage! Hi, I'm the wicked wiener! Oh! Oh, I f***ing hit that! I hit that, bro! Ah. Oh. Needless to say, by the end of this almost four hour long recording, I did not want to be playing this game anymore. Just like every other boss, I'm going to be talking about each phase individually, and of course, we're going to start with her first phase. During her first phase, the attacks that she does are generally pretty easy to dodge. She only has two attacks that she can do, the first attack being the snake oil attack, which is really easy. All you have to do is just stand in the middle of each snake, and you can perfectly dodge it. The second attack is the cactus attack, which is also really easy to dodge. All we have to do is just pay attention to if it's on the top or the bottom, and then go to the opposite side of the screen. Now that does it for her attacks, but there's also two minions she can spawn. The Vulture and the Flying Horse. The Vulture is definitely the easier of the two to actually dodge. What the Vulture does is he flies above the screen and drops down a stick of dynamite, which blows up into three projectiles and then two. If we're at the back of the screen, all we have to do is go to the top of the screen, and then they become really easy to dodge. The flying horses, on the other hand, are the complete opposite. They have absolutely relentless aimbot, which is why we have to use our charm, the Divine Relic. Basically, if you don't know what the Divine Relic does, is it combines all charms into one single charm. And of course, one of these charms is the Smoke Bomb. The Smoke Dash can be used during plane levels, but the invincibility you get from the Smoke Dash is literally only a few frames long. Now I know that sounds absolutely horrible, but if I use my Smoke Dash while moving down, we can actually dodge the aimbot. And other than grabbing the one-off parry for some extra HP from the Heart Ring, the first phase is done. And now we move on to literally the stupidest phase in the entirety of this challenge. For the rest of her phases, she doesn't really change her attacks that much, so I'm just going to explain the strategy for each phase. To begin the second phase, we need her to do what I like to call the tiny suck. Now I know that sounds really weird, but um... <laughs> When she starts off the second phase, she does her vacuum attack, which can either last for an extremely long amount of time, or a short amount of time. 
Just to show you, here's the two attacks side by side so you can actually see how long the other one takes. For anybody wondering, I'm not actually moving during this boss fight. The vacuum attack actually pulls your character in. So the reason why I want the tiny suck in the first place is because it's going to stop me from being pulled into her hurt box. After that attack, she does her second attack where she launches safes out of her vacuum. This attack is pretty hard to dodge, but there's also a fair bit of RNG involved. Once we're done with that attack, she's going to use her vacuum attack for the final time. This time she's going to pull us into her hurt box, but we're going to use the whetstone, which is equipped in the divine relic to do tons of damage. Hopefully, we do enough damage to transition her into her third phase after two vacuum attacks. So, now we're in the third phase. The only problem with the third phase is she literally spawns right below us, and she can move upwards. So, what we need to do is we need to damage tank twice to get far enough away from her that we're not actually taking any damage. So, now it's all about dodging. It's really hard to actually dodge her attacks because they come at me so fast and I have, like, no time to actually react to them but we're really just gonna hope that I don't take any more damage for the rest of this phase. So now we're on to the final phase. I don't really have a strategy for the final phase because it's completely RNG based. I'm just gonna try my best to get as many parries as I can to make use of the heart ring. I'm also gonna try and build up my super so if I'm gonna take any guaranteed damage, I can use it for invincibility frames. And other than that, there's not much to say about this phase. I'm just gonna let you watch the rest of it. Oh my god, I'm done with this sh Let's go! Come on, baby! I'm that man! I'm that guy! I'm that guy right there! Come on! <laughs> no way, bro! <laughs> no way of B plus, bro! What the f- so yeah, it's safe to say I was pretty happy to be done with this boss, but if the last five minutes tell you anything, then you already know where this is going on the tier list. But as you all know, there's one more thing waiting for us, and it's back at the bakery. This is by far the hardest boss we will ever face in this entire challenge. Chef Salt Baker. Every single phase in his boss fight is extremely difficult, starting with the first phase. There's a lot of different attacks that he can do, but they're mainly just all RNG based. But the only problem with this phase is the flame. If you don't know, during the first and second phase of this boss fight, there's constantly a flame on the top or the bottom of the screen. What this flame does is it jumps periodically and will always go to the player's exact location. Meaning the only way to dodge this flame attack is to use the X moves, which we don't have unlimited of. Now, this seems like a pretty simple fix, just use the Divine Relic. Now, the problem with the Divine Relic is, not only do I lose Miss Chalice's double jump, but also all of our weapons are randomized. So this means that it's completely up to RNG to see if we actually deal damage. So, what was my solution? The problem is that there wasn't one. After hours and hours of attempts on and off stream, I wasn't even able to make it to the third phase of this boss fight. Even during test runs where I allowed moving for the first phase and had 8 HP going into the second phase, I couldn't even beat the boss. That meant that even if we did an absolutely perfect first phase, which is impossible, we wouldn't even be able to beat the boss. So was that it? Just hours upon hours of gameplay. All 21 of the main game bosses being completely possible, and what was looking like every single DLC boss being possible, we were just stopped by the final boss? Well, not yet. There was one more thing I wanted to try. Yo. Yo. Yeah. So, I need help with a challenge. I need to beat Salt Baker No Moving. Oh, no moving. I guess I'll help you if you admit that you stole my challenge. Uh. Alright, thank you guys so much for watching this video. All jokes aside, this was my secret to finally beating this boss, two-player mode. If you look back at the rules, there's nothing banning the use of two-player mode. 
So to assist me with this challenge, I've brought along my slightly worse at Cuphead Oscar winning carbon copy, Barely Alec. But before I explain the strategy, if you can even call it that, of this boss fight, there was just a ton of funny moments from us recording this boss fight, so I present to you two guys, three and a half brain cells. And I, you can't do that, that's it's no I'm moving. Sorry. Mugman. Mugman. You seem to be broken. Is this hit? That was kind of tiny brain by me. Oh my god, that's the reason. Oh wow, I am in a really good spot for ducking here. I'm not. I'm in danger. Lois. Lois. Lois! 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 Okay, Lois. You ready to win? <laughs> okay, Lois. Damn it. Do you want to save it for later, is what you're saying? I don't know what I want. I want to win. <laughs> no, you want either. You're gonna get us killed, Lois! <laughs> Lois! I should have ducked. Oh, yeah. Why didn't I, I duck? My beautiful wife, Lois. <laughs> what? That's not Peter Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> it's me, Peter from Family Guy. Oh my god, Lois, I'm in Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> Name other Ginger Simpsons characters. What do you mean? There's Peter? Peter's <laughs> not Ginger. <laughs> He's not in The Simpsons. <laughs> we all go and have pool parties at Sample's and house. go bowling. Yeah. <gasps> yes! Okay, what do we do? What do we do? Do Work. I kill myself here? Do I die? Do I die? <laughs> yes! Just die. No, why'd you jump? Uh, uh, ah. Was, was that your Marge? From what? From Smiling Friends? Have you seen it? Right? No. What? What is that? You don't know? No. It's like, it's just a good adult comedy. It's a show? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about, man. Is that just like you just use this because you're Canadian? Is that what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> it is me, your wife, Peter. <laughs> your, your Peter wife. <laughs> what's your opinion on Benjamin Franklin? Welcome to the Cupcast. Honestly, pretty cool guy. How close that's was that? Ah. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty good. Ah! It's good, it's good, it's good, it's good. It's so good. So Mamma mia, mama mia, mama mia. <laughs> I'm here with the voice actor of Lois Simpsons. Oh, oh god. That's Marge. That's Marge. That's, That's just that. <laughs> Lois, please, man. Oh, oh. Lois! Lois! I'm gonna eat Lois, bro. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> we only... A locus of control. Have you heard that term before? It's control what you can. Lois of... Lois can. of control. The Lois of control. <laughs> yes. Lois what you can? Lois what you can? <laughs> yes. This is a problem. Oh, we're losing, we're losing! Oh! Wait, because I can respawn on top. <laughs> Bye, Lois! <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should just crank some 90s on Chef Salpain. That I'm gonna show that meme so many times. Holy, Holy crap, crap Lois, I'm, I'm in Fortnite. Fortnite! God damn it! Why did I turn British up? <laughs> I'm in Holy Fortnite. crap, Lois, I'm British. Hey, I'm Johnny Knoxville, and today we're gonna be <laughs> shooting me in the face. I hope you enjoyed that, but now we're back to the boss fight. Now that we have two people in the boss fight, the flame, which single-handedly ruined our original run, is now completely broken. The flame doesn't know which person to actually go after, so instead of just going after one person, it just gives up and goes after neither of us. This makes the first phase definitely way easier, but not a light breeze. I'd say a mildly violent wind. I don't know. Right before the first phase ended, we wanted Alec to die. Now, I know that sounds extremely weird, but it, there's, a, there's a strategy. What we wanted to happen was we wanted him to die so his ghost could move off screen while the phase was transitioning. After this phase transition, hopefully I had enough HP to actually revive him. Basically, if you didn't know, in Cuphead, you can sacrifice one of your HP to give it to the other person to revive them. And with Alec revived, he's gonna spawn right on top of Cuphead. This is important because it's time to engage the lowest strategy. The lowest strategy is an ancient method practiced by some, but mastered by none, other than the two that you are watching on screen. What I want to do is I want to use up as much HP as I do have until I'm on 2 HP. After that, I'm going to revive Alec, and we're each going to take turns sacrificing ourselves to the Flame God. What we want to do is we want to die while the other still has invincibility frames from being revived. So we can basically create an infinite loop of dying and respawning each other to give us invincibility frames. And with enough death, the flame god is happy and sends the final pepper shaker into Salt Baker's face, and we're on to the next phase. Once he enters his third phase, we're gonna show off another one of our legendary strategies, also known as Lo Lois's Revenge. 
Los's revenge is the exact same as the regular strategy, but instead of a flame god, we have a saw god. What we want to do is we want to sacrifice our extremely willing participant, Alec, to the saw god. And once we're done that, we're going to time our deaths to make sure that we always have invincibility frames. And now we're on to the final phase where I could explain the strategy, but if I'm being honest, it was just us scrambling and trying not to die. So I'm just going to let you watch. Do you want me to use super? Uh, uh, okay, just, you use super. Uh, <laughs> or I'm still alive somehow. I shouldn't have used super here. It's all good in the hood. We get pay. Oh, get me, get me. Nice. It's kind of weird. Wait, I'm going to, you're going to die? Oh, Woo! yep. I, I messed that up a bit, but I, oh, I think oh. I can make it. Yep. <laughs> Okay, I'll stay still, I'll stay still. I'm gonna die. Let's go! We did it, we did it! That's so easy. I mean, so hard. That was so difficult. Dude, we actually did it. We did it, though. That's Cuphead that like DLC without moving! This was our second day attempting this boss. The first three hours from the first day were all just trying to use the Divine Relic. So we wanted to see if the coffee charm was any better, and obviously, it was. So there we go. All 28 bosses from the main game and the DLC have been completed without moving a single time. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and of course, thank you to the man, the myth, the legend, Barely Alec, for helping me out with this challenge. Alex super close to 15k, so please go subscribe to his channel. If he doesn't reach 15k, I'm going to be mad. And the deal's still on the table. If you want to see Cuphead blindfolded, 10,000 likes on this video. Thank you all so much for your support on the last video, hopefully on this video, and on the channel as a whole. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please leave a like and consider subscribing. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.